Today, Anthropic released CoWork, which is a version of Claude code that is designed for non-coding tasks and lives right in the Claude desktop app. I'm excited to give it a whirl. I thought, why not test it on camera? And so what I thought I would do is point it to the folder that I have for PDP Forge, which is actually changing its name. I'm changing it to Acom Studio for Agentic Commerce, but that's beside the point. When I'm working on a project like Acom Studio or PDP Forge, I usually combine the marketing with the project itself because all of the context is very self-contained. It can get bloated and a little bit hectic to manage. But the first thing that I wanted to do was to get an understanding of if I give CoWork access to my project folder of the app that I'm developing for the purpose of managing marketing, will this be a symbiotic relationship that I can use to manage marketing in CoWork? while maintaining context and manage the project itself in Claude code all from the same folder. So I don't know if we'll answer that question right now, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. I'm just going to give it a simple prompt to let's work on marketing for this project. I'm not going to give it details on purpose because I want to understand how much is co-work going to know. There is a Claude MD in this project folder. And I'm curious if CoWork is going to read it. So I'm going to hit enter. Let's see what happens. It still thinks that the project is called PDP Forge, but it does have a pretty good idea of what the project is an AI powered product image generation platform positioned as the image intelligence layer for agentic commerce. Okay. That is true. It's evolved a little bit since then. And as I mentioned earlier, the name of the project has changed. I don't think that I've fully worked that change through just yet. I'm not surprised, nor am I concerned that it still thinks this is PDP Forge. Okay. While I was just speaking, it just decided on its own to choose one of the options. So there, I was on a timer just now, and that is new if we're in planning mode. So it said no preference. It had asked me what aspects of marketing I wanted to focus on, but I did not get to choose. You know what? Let's see what happens when we interrupt and. Can you ask me the questions again about what aspect of marketing I would like to focus on? I didn't get to choose one. So very interesting that there's a time element to those questions. Like I'm taking some kind of timed quiz. Okay. Landing page copy, marketing collateral, content strategy, positioning, and messaging. I want to talk about positioning and messaging. Okay. Great choice. Positioning and messaging is foundational. It shapes everything else. Let me explore what currently exists in the project to understand the current messaging. And then we can work on refining it. So it's cool that I was able to interrupt it and then resurface those questions. I hope you can turn that timer off. I don't really like that because I walk away from my computer a lot. So unclear about that behavior, but I hope that you can disable the timer. So it looks like it's added Claude.md and the readme to the context, which is great. So it does know to look for Claude.md and now it's bringing in even more context. It finished thinking. Current positioning analysis, ACOM Studio, PDP Forge. Okay, so it did pick up on the name change this time. What you have, strong foundation, core position, the image intelligence layer for AI shopping. The big idea, you're positioned at the intersection of agentic commerce, UCP, and the discovery gap. All true. It asked me a question while I wasn't looking and then just decided the answer for me. So this is disruptive, I will say, at the moment. And I really hope that there's a setting to disable the timer. Anyway, let's just skip to the bottom for the sake of this video. I'll create a comprehensive messaging audit document for Acom Studio. Let me build this out. So far, everything that I've read is pretty accurate in terms of where I have been on positioning with this project. The fact that it picked up on the name change is encouraging. I don't love how it's skipping over questions if I don't get to them fast enough. In this exact instance, my video recorder crashed, so I had to turn away just to fix it. And by the time I came back, it had already chosen no preference for that answer. Okay. So it ran a skill, docx, launching docx. Okay. I'm not sure off the top of my head if I know what skill that is. That's not a skill that I created or brought into the picture. But it's good to know that CoWork can use skills. Confirm. Right now, CoWork is using the docx skill to create a message audit document for Acom Studio. So there's no visibility what's happening behind this bash command. In Claude code, you do have that visibility if you want it. When you don't see activity happening, I always get concerned that something is stuck, but it's not. We can see that there's still activity happening here. It looks like it, the project added more context. 
and it created a comprehensive positioning and messaging guide for Acom Studio. Here's what's included. Okay. Wow. Okay. Executive summary, brand identity, etc. We won't read through it all. Key recommendations, brand name, consolidate on Acom Studio externally. That's the plan. Already bought the domains and my next step is to start that rebrand. Consider the headline, UCP handles checkout, we handle discovery for protocol aware audiences. Not bad. I think I like the one that's there a little bit more right now. Lead with ends at the AI agent, not the pixel. That's actually good. Subheadline, keep current, it's strong. The document is saved in your project folder. Would you like me to refine any specific section further, create additional materials, update the landing page code with refined messaging? I'm going to update the landing page code with refined messaging. So I'm just going to use my voice. Let's update the landing page code with refined messaging. However, I want to preserve the existing landing page if we decide to revert those changes or we decide that we don't like the new landing page. All right. And I think the project is backed up on GitHub right now. I think the latest landing page is preserved fine. Let's not worry too much about that. So it's preserving the current landing page. Let's see how it's going to do that. Okay. It's backed up those files locally. Okay. I'm surprised that it has not made an artifact yet. In my earlier run, it did make several artifacts that all appeared here and were accessible just by clicking. Now we got one. So if we click an artifact, we get a third panel that pops out where we can browse that artifact. This is a file of code. So nothing is going to render visually, but we can see the hero TSX, which is code that's related to the landing page. So I'm just going to close that. Here's another artifact. Okay. What I'm curious about is if it's going to show me the landing page once it's finished and we can have it render in co-work or not. So the experience is very reminiscent of Claude code. It went to build the app, which is encouraging. That's what, that's something I would expect out of Claude code, not necessarily co-work. So although it's being positioned as a non-coding agent, it looks like it's still very much has the same capabilities and tools as Claude code proper. Okay. So it's giving me a summary of all of the pages that it's changed. Cool. The hero badge, the discovery layer for agenda commerce, I got better. Let me know in the comments what you think is the better positioning for Acom Studio for the hero. UCP handles checkout, we handle discovery, the discovery layer for Agenta Commerce. I feel like UCP is so new that not a lot of people really know what it is yet. So I'm not sure if that's going to be meaningful just yet. So one thing I'm very curious about is if there's a way that I can get it to show me the landing page. So let's just take a look at these options. It's giving me the information that I need to revert if I want to and presenting me with additional steps. Preview the changes in browser. Yes, that's actually what I want to do. Refine any specific section or update the positioning guide document to match the new copy. Okay, let's preview the changes in the browser. It still has the old logo. UCP handles checkout. We handle discovery. Don't love this flag. Make AI agents recommend your products. I like the directness of that. It did maintain the design of the landing page. You've optimized titles and descriptions for years. Your images still IMG 4392. That's funny. And generally, I think this is pretty good. I got the impression this line was up higher, but I think down here it actually works. It's Claude. It's going to do roughly equivalent work as Claude code will do, which is generally very good. And so I think I'm pretty happy with the way that it works. And it's nice to know that we can use co-work in this environment to do some of this work that is in between coding and just straight up project-based work. So doing landing pages, check. Okay. So let's come up with another task and see what we can do. I want to try and get it to create a to-do list. Let's start creating a launch plan for Acom Studio. I want a checklist of everything that I need to do before a launch. Just off the top of my head, some of those things are going to be related to the URL or domain chain. We're going from PDP Forge to acom.studio. So I want to make sure that we're accounting for all of those relevant changes, including the transactional email system and Stripe integration. So we'll need a very specific checklist to go through ahead of launch. All right, let's see what happens. Running a command. It's looking through the file directory. But let me first explore the code base to understand all the places where PDP Forge branding URLs and integrations exist. Cool. So it's doing a comprehensive look at where PDP Forge exists, and it's going to help me finish the rebrand and make sure that I tackle everything that I need to tackle regarding a domain change ahead of launch. So you can actually 
click right on the folders in your context. Look at that, Claude in Chrome. So when it calls a connector, you can actually look at the history of that connector's actions. That's pretty cool. I like that. Claude.md can read it and it's formatted very nicely. Read me, same deal. Not surprised. It's created a checklist document in Word. I'm not a huge fan. I would I honestly probably prefer Markdown. I don't love that it's creating doc files and I'm curious why. It's possible I might have a doc creation skill in there. It's just using it. However, not ideal. Okay, so it gave me a list, which is nice. I'll review that. But I kind of want a better presentation of that list. Can you give me an interactive list for launch that I can check off items, make notes, and schedule things over time so I can be diligent and buttoned up about getting it done on time? Let's see what happens. I didn't give it any direction about the architecture that I wanted to develop this asset with. My hunch is that it's just going to use HTML and create some kind of web-based artifact, but let's see what happens. This is probably where a lot of people are going to find value in co-work is operationalizing tasks like this that easily and seamlessly plug into broader projects. I see a lot of opportunity there. I think a lot of people like myself who have been using Claude code for non-coding use cases brush up against these things, right? I create tons of HTML dashboards and reports, compact. So another difference, we don't have any control over the compacting function. In Claude code, you can use slash context to see how much of your context window is being used by MCP servers, by tools, and how much context you, you can compact manually if you like, or you can turn the feature off. It's very handy if you know what you're doing to manage compacting when you need to. I'm not sure how that will work here, but it looks like compacting will happen on its own. And as far as I can see, there is no direct control over compacting. Okay, I dug around in the settings for a moment and it does look like there are some additional settings that are related to co-work, but nothing that I could find that allows you to control compacting. Right, I've completed the interactive launch tracker. Let me give you a quick summary of what was delivered. It created an Excel workbook sheet, not something that I expected and also a little bit disappointed because who the hell wants to work in an Excel spreadsheet for this sort of thing? Where can I pull it up? Is it in the artifacts? I don't see it in the artifacts, but it does give me a file location, which is a little bit weird. It's in a very specific session folder, so not in my project folder. Okay, I didn't mean an Excel sheet. I meant something that is perhaps web-based and has more of a graphical treatment for me to quickly visualize my status and visualize my remaining work. All right, let's give this one more shot and then I'm gonna call it. It's almost time for dinner. Okay, so it is writing an HTML file this time. I'm surprised that it has not used a checklist. I couldn't get it to, but it did in my previous task that I used when I first started co-work. So initial impressions, I think generally are positive. I do see a lot of value if this starts to work a little bit more cleanly and you have a little bit more control over the capabilities like you do in Claude code. Compacting is a perfect example of that. Don't love how if you let questions sit in planning mode, it will just decide no preference for you. There needs to be a way to change that because I quite simply have to get up sometimes and come back and I can't have it just moving forward. I like the way that it allows you to easily access context and artifacts. And I did like how it laid out a task list when I saw it. And one thing that it did with the task list is that it allows you to annotate it. Okay, I'm just jumping to a project I did beforehand, but if we look up here, Here's the list that it created for that task. And you can click on here and it will add this task to your prompt bar. And then you can reply with direction changes or questions, however you want to change the plan over there. All right, let's head back to this, see what it comes up with. Oh, doing a lot of scrolling. It looks, looks like there's a little bit of a scrolling bug. It's funny because that actually happens in Claude code as well. All right, not too bad. Okay, look, all the tasks are organized with these pills. So I wonder if it used one of the UI skills that I have in the project. So there's several UI skills that I have there for Acom Studio. There are UI skills around layout, forms, motions, and animation. And then there are stylistic skills 
like glass morphic design or soft UI. Acom Studio is using soft UI. So it's really nice to be able to just point it to that skill to keep the site consistent from a UI perspective. And maybe I'll do another video about that, but I'd love to see here if it went and used a skill. I don't see any evidence that it did, but this is not too bad. This is not a bad tracker. Nice the way it's designed. It's thought of all of the different options. I can block these tasks if something is getting in the way. Uh, I can delete them, it appears. I can create new tasks. This is actually not bad. Maybe I will use this. All right, I think I'm gonna call it there. So hopefully this was helpful just to get a quick look at co-work. I think there's a lot of potential here. I do see myself using it again some things I liked about it, how you can work in the same directory as a Claude code project. So you can set up a workflow where maybe you use co-work for more of the business and marketing oriented tasks related to a project that you're developing inside of Claude code. I like how it makes context and artifacts easily accessible with one click. I like how it lets you annotate to-do list when it's working through a task. I like how it gives you a third panel to view these materials when you want to, but a couple of things I don't like. I don't like how you can't set your mode. In Claude Code, you have the ability to change your mode from planning to edit, etc. And it looks like that co-work is set up to start off or kick in plan mode when it thinks that it's necessary. I do like that it does use skills. I want to understand a little bit more about the skills that it's accessing. Is it accessing skills in my project directory or is it accessing skills that are in Claude desktop? So that's an open question that I have. I don't like how it doesn't give you control over compacting. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. I'm curious about the behavior. If you were to run several tasks simultaneously in the same project. So I will continue using this and reporting my findings and Thank you for watching. If you're seeing this before January 15th, I'm partnering with the Boring Marketer and the Vibe Marketer community to lead a Claude Code 101 for Beginners session. It's 90 minutes, it's completely free, and I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna register. You can find me at The Viable Edge on Twitter, as well as Viable Edge on YouTube, and I'll leave links below. Visit viableedge.com where you can sign up for my newsletter, where I talk a lot about the cross-section of vibe coding and vibe marketing. So thank you so much for watching.